Hey, what's up guys, Zach with Wired Customs, and today I'm gonna to show you how to put aluminum heads on a running flathead. So since this is a running and driving flathead, the first thing you wanna do before you take the cooling out of it is start the motor up, let it get uh, operation temperature nice and warm. Then you're gonna shut it down and just let it cool um, just a little bit. So when metal heats, it expands. When it cools, it contracts back down. What we're aiming for is getting the heat in the studs. We want to get the studs nice and warmed up because um, we don't want the motor sitting for the last three months, then try to take um, the head studs out. So what I've already done prior to this part of the video is I ran the motor, got it nice and warm, cooled it off, drained the coolant out of it. This is all just within like an hour window. So the motor's still technically warm right now as I'm touching it. But you want to break all the studs loose with a breaker bar or like a long ratchet you want to get a good feel of what the studs feel like because we do not want to break any of these off in the block that just adds so much more extra time into trying to replace the heads all the studs have to come out anyway so if one of them comes out with uh, the nut perfectly fine that's actually a good thing so be very very careful guys at taking these um, nuts off we do not want to break any studs now I'm doing an old trick. I have all the nuts off the head. And what I'm doing is I'm cranking the engine over to let that compression uh, break the head gasket loose. The, the head gasket been compressed for a while, so it does technically have a little bit of a seal to it. That compression sometimes likes to pop the head off. I leave one nut on in the middle. And if that doesn't work, I get my little dead blow hammer and I just beat around the, the cylinder head trying to break it loose. Um, you know, once it's loose, you can wiggle it back and forth by hand. So take your time. Flatheads can be a little pesky when it comes to heads, head removal, head replacements. So this process isn't going to be an easy, simplified process. It's going to be a complicated, tedious process. Um, this motor ended up being really easy to take apart and put back together. They're usually not this easy. So as you can watch through here, um, this is me getting kind of lucky about how it disassembles. Now, if you do have to resort to prying on the head a little bit, which is pretty common, just be very careful about where you're prying. Um, we are not going to mill this engine. This engine isn't coming out. We're just replacing the heads because it's a known good running engine. So be very, very careful about where you're prying on it. Sometimes it just has to happen. Sometimes studs have been replaced. Um, when our threads get stripped out on the head, uh, replacement studs, they're not always perfectly straight. There is some tension sometimes coming off. So just be very careful and mindful uh, so you don't put any gouges in the uh, surface of, of the head on the block. I thought I'd leave this part of the video in here so I wouldn't edit out all the hard parts of me struggling. You know, just make it look easy in a short video. Now this is a tedious process. I Even I'm struggling to get this head off. Getting a little tired of leaning over the fender, but you got to do what you got to do. Since this car is not going to the machine shop, throughout the entirety of this process, we have to clean, clean, clean. Just clean over and over again. Right now, as soon as I got the head off on this side, I went right into vacuuming, getting anything I could get out of here. Also, I'm trying to vacuum out the coolant out of the coolant passages. These um, head studs go right into the coolant passages. When we go to put the new ones in, I want the coolant passages to be dry so they uh, seal really, really well. I take my studs out with a stud remover from Eastwood. It's a 716 stud remover. It makes this process a lot easier. Um, I highly recommend for you guys to get one of these. It works really well. As long as you know it's going to destroy the stud, it's going to smash the threads. Um, I'm not reusing any of these because I'm putting aluminum heads on, so we want longer studs anyways. But I just want you to have that information. You cannot use reuse the studs if you're going to remove the studs um, in this way. Now that we got the studs out of the way, it's time to clean the surface of the block. 
I start with the razor blade because a lot of times a part of the head gasket um, can stick to the block and it looks like it's indentations or um, like burn marks in the block when it's really materials of head gasket. So I try to make sure this surface is perfectly smooth with the razor before I move on to the next step. Now go ahead and take a green scrub pad. Um, before I did this part of the video, I put brake clean on my green scrub pad and just scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed. Um, we don't want to spray brake clean directly onto the head because we don't want to get it down in the cylinders. But you need to get this surface as absolutely clean as possible. And throughout this process, of course, make sure you keep vacuuming out the cylinders. Since we're going to go right into running this motor as soon as the head's back on, these cylinders need to be spot clean, nothing down inside them that could possibly scratch the wall or get inside the oil. Now you're gonna to need to purchase a 7 16 by 14 chase, not a tap. It has to be a chase. We're gonna to have to clean out every single thread hole. Um, these threads can get gunked up because they are part of the coolant passages. They could have old sealant on it. And this is a crucial part to this process. This is actually a flathead's weak point is these studs and uh, their passages through the block. I do not put any type of lubricant on the chase. The thought behind that is I need these passages clean and dry. So when we go to put sealer on there, we're not putting sealer like on WD-40 or anything like that. It needs to seal very, very well. If this process has any mistakes or it doesn't seal well for the next step, of course, um, you'll run the motor and you'll actually get coolant leaking up through uh, the nuts, through the bolts. Um, they'll actually walk up the threads. That's actually really frustrating knowing that you have to take uh, or have to start this process all over again. So take your time, put on some uh, light music and then try to enjoy the process as best as you can. Also, you can see here, as soon as I chase it out, I put a new stud back in the head. Um, I wanna feel that the stud goes all the way down just by finger pressure. I don't have to force it through any of the threads. So it's clean enough that the new studs can thread all the way down. So all these studs that I'm putting in are gonna come right back out because we have to put sealant on them in the next step. Here you can see me double nutting all the studs. I'm getting them all ready because when I put sealer on them, I want to go right into installing them into the head and just trying to make the process as efficient and clean as possible. I use Permatex thread sealant and I'm going to cake it on pretty heavy, knowing that most of this is just going to get wiped off in the process. Now the forward manual says to torque these down to about 8 to 10 foot pounds. I've always just snugged them down real hard with a, with a 3 8 ratchet. It's done me fine. Really the applied force is all about thread versus thread and not the studs torque so take that as you will torque them down if you like or snug them down if you like that is totally up to you but what's crucial here is getting it tight then wiping off the excess permatex we don't want anything on this head surface that's not uh, copper spray so make sure the surface stays really clean throughout this process it's a little bit of a pain i put a little brake clean on a rag and i wipe the permatex off now I can take a little bit of love taps to make sure this head goes on nice and flat. What I failed to record was um, make sure you spray, I use a copper gasket and I spray both sides of that uh, copper gasket heavy with copper spray. This is super common on head gaskets throughout many years of vehicles. Spray it down nice and heavy and make sure you stick it on over the studs. We want to make sure um, also on the head, the aluminum head that I did not record was I put anti-seize with my finger inside where the studs would be inside the aluminum head. I don't put the anti-seize on the studs themselves because I've always been afraid of pushing the head back down and the anti-seize um, kind of spreading over to my head gasket area. So head gaskets on flat heads, they almost have to be perfect to get them to seal. Be very, very careful. And sometimes the heads require just a little bit of rubber mallet to get them to sit down completely flush and flat against the block. I like to take the time and label out the um, torque pattern onto my heads. Uh, I put them on little tape, as you can see here. And so when I go to put the head on, and I'm actually torquing them down. This kind of helps the process, helps me to go a little bit faster because I don't necessarily have to remember the torque sequence. I just follow the numbers. I think this is super simple, and I highly recommend for you to do something similar to this. Next, I install the nuts 
in the torque sequence of the head. Uh, this just kind of helps me out with the flow, the process. Um, so when I go to torque them down, I'm already in the groove. Now this next part of the uh, process is extremely crucial and you cannot rush through this. So what I'm doing here is I'm gonna torque this in stages. We're not gonna go right to the, the actual torque spec of this head because we wanna compress this gasket, push it out towards the edges, make sure there's no creases or folds in it. Uh, I know that sounds crazy when it's that small and compressed, but this is actually super important. So I'm gonna start with 15 foot pounds. I'm gonna to torque every nut down to 15 foot pounds. Once I get to the very end of that torque sequence, I'm gonna go through the whole torque sequence again at 15 foot-pounds, because if you tighten the center down at 15, by the time you get out to the edges, the center is no longer 15. So the way that I work it is, as soon as every single nut clicks at 15 foot-pounds, I'm gonna move on to the next step, which is 35 foot-pounds, same thing. Everything has to pass 35 foot-pounds before you go to the next step. My next step is 45, and my final step is 55 foot-pounds. So one head could take a very long, uh, very long time. This is a very painstaking process, but it's, it's definitely worth it. Take your time, make sure everything passes that foot pound before you move on to the next one. Some guys do 50, some guys do 60 foot pounds at the end. I usually end at 55. That's just where I feel comfortable at. After you're done with that torque sequence, you only have one step left. Um, do not put any coolant in the motor. You actually want to start it up and run it up to temp. I usually run it up to 165 degrees with no coolant in it. Obviously with the belts off of the motor, so we're not running those water pumps dry. Um, I have a little sensor that I use and I scan it anywhere I possibly can on the block, just going all the way around it. I don't want to get it hotter than 165 degrees, but I want to completely warm it up. So just sit there and let it idle to about 160 degrees with your temp gun, um, then cut it off let it cool then retort the heads to make sure that 55 foot pounds like i said earlier heat likes to expand metal when it cools down it contracts you want to make sure we have a nice even torque all the way across the heads and it doesn't hurt to occasionally check your heads after you've run them a thousand miles uh 2000 miles just to make sure they're nice and tight at 55 foot pounds so thank you guys for watching this video if you enjoyed it you can pick up some merch on our website wired custom merch also we sell early ford transmission parts and we just began selling uh, flathead Ford speed parts. So if you want some speed parts, check out my website, get everything you need all in one place. Thanks for watching.